the sixth parak, the Mishnah. Shlosha, and this is on 15b, on Tesvav Medves. Shlosha also shafers, there were 13 shofars at the, uh, at the base of Mikdash. And these shofars were really the collection boxes, but they were shaped in a shofar shape so that the bottom was wide and can receive all the coins. And the top was very narrow so that the coin could go in, but a hand can fit in to get it. And also was, it was curved out, sort of like a deposit box. So this way, somebody could put the coin in and it'll fall to the bottom, but there was not a chance that they would be able to get their hand in and take some coins out. So that's why it's called chauffeurs because of the, sh- the, the, the deposit box wide, being wide at the bottom and curved at the top so as to protect uh, people, uh, the coins, so that people could drop it in, but could not take any out. Shlosh Yasser there were 13 tables in the Beis HaMikdash. Shlosh Yasser Hishtach there are 13 places that one would bow in the Beis HaMikdash. Ahib HaMikdash, Shal Beis Rav Gabliyev, Shal Beis Rav Hananin, Skana Kanim. However, these two opinions also say, Ahib Hishtach Ve'abasar, there was a 14th place of, uh, uh, that there was bowing as well. Um, uh, where was the 14th? Yeah, uh, you uh, say, facing the wood uh, chamber, the chamber where the wood for the Mizbeach was held. And why would they bow, bow over there? What was so great about that? She came because they had a tradition, Malvasem from their fathers, Shasham Aranignas, because that's, they had a tradition that that's where the ark that was hidden. In, in the days of Chizkiyot, it was hidden in that chamber over there in the room, uh, in the walls, and that's where the Holy Ark is, and so they and so they bowed there. Misha tells a story, Maisa, uh, the uh, there was an occurrence with a certain kind, who was, uh, who was um, uh, involved in work in the Mesimekdash, and saw a tile on the floor that was different than the others. He tried showing it to his friend, and he didn't He didn't get to complete the words. And he suddenly passed away. And they realized that it must be that somewhere there is where the Aron is hidden beneath the floorboards. And so they, uh, they um, he couldn't describe it. And... and um, um, that they were not ready to see it. Tani Miller. So we learn that these shafras, they were curved uh, at the top. And they were narrow at the top and wide at the bottom. To, uh, to stop uh, cheats that were going to steal the, the um, try and steal the coins. They would come in make believe they're dropping something in, but really take some out, uh, sw- you know, um, uh, slickly. And so um, it was done in a way that the collection of the coins had space at the bottom, like the wide opening of the shofar and the narrow opening at the top that's curved away. So this way it was um, the coins could go in, hands cannot, and, the, and that they were um, curved downward. Tani b'shem Rebbe Lazar, aren't goli that Rabbi Lazar taught that the 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 coin the the Aron Kodesh the Aron the Holy Ark actually went with the with the Jews with Bnei Yisrael to Bavel and that's where it remained um, uh, during the time that the Jews went to 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 exile in Bavel. My time. Now, where is the basis for this that he says? Because the the pasuk says uh, um, in in the Navi. And the Navi says that days are coming, that, uh, that and everything that's in the house of the of uh, of uh, the house uh, in your house will be carried, and everything that was gathered uh, in in your um, will be taken to Bavel. Nothing will be left, says Hashem. Ain davar eladibur. So what do I mean? No, nothing, no matter will be leivaser davar davar. Is adibros? Those are the 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 stones of uh, the dibros of the tablets, of the uh, of the statements. Um, so that's the ark that the dibros are within it. Uh, and similarly, we see also 
uh, in, in Divri Ayyamin, where it says that and at the, the, the return of the year, meaning at that anniversary, the, the king Nebuchadnezzar brought to Babel, brought him to Babel, that's the king, with the uh, the uh, uh, all, the desirable vessels, meaning the beloved vessels of the house of Hashem, and uh, um, he and made his uh, and made Sikiyo, his brother king instead of him. So when when he brought the king, it says that he also brought uh, all the desirable vessels of the house of Hashem, which is the Aaron as well. Ezu Kalichem is based on Hashem. The Aaron, that's the Aaron. Rabbi Shemim and Lakish Shemir them came by Aaron Ignas. He disagrees. He says no, Rabbi Lazar, that the the uh, ark was not taken to Babel, rather it was hidden in its place. Ado dechsev like it says vayericho abadim yira abadim veriroshe abadim el akedish el pnei adbir v'leyero achutza. The ark, um, the the staffs, the the the, the poles that were in that were in the uh, Aron and never taken out, they were part of it uh, um, to teach a message of of the, the the that the ark is not the poles are not there to hold up the ark, but to, to hold us up as we attach ourselves to the ark, to the Aron uh, Kodesh. So it, it says that they they would not be seen outside. They were very far. They would uh, be um, uh, they would seen. Uh, the heads of the, the the poles would be seen in the in the Beis Hamikdash itself, and they will not be seen outward. So, not be seen uh, uh, outward tells us that the Ark would never leave the Holy, never leave the Beis Hamikdash. And now the Gemara asks, wait, but the the verse itself is contradictory. But it says Vayiru. It says the poles would be seen outward, uh, uh, be seen in the in the. Uh, uh, in the base um, hamikdash, and then it says, and they will not be seen outward. What's the, how does that mean? Elanirin velanir, they are seen but not seen. What does that mean? That means the poles themselves cannot be seen because it was behind the curtain. However, when the poles were pushing against the curtain, the two poles, so built in, they would make the curtain have a protrusion, and, 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 and that was sticking out. Kishnei dadi isha, like two breasts of a woman uh, um, um, through clothing. The idea is that the the message of the ark is that it was a source of nourishment, a source of kedusha of holiness that would be uh, nourishing to bnei Yisrael. and so it was not seen itself, but it, its its uh, uh, impact can be seen. Uh, in any case, the source of Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon Melakish is that the ark remained in, in, in the Beis HaMikdash, it was not taken to Bavu, because it says, Lo Yiruachutza, and not be seen outside. The Rabbanan Amri and the Rabbanan say, Belishas Gdira Eitzinaya Aran Ganus, that it was actually um, placed and hidden somewhere within the uh, the walls or floorboards of the Dir Eitzim uh, uh, of the wood chamber. The Gemara tells a story uh, um, like our Mishnah, there was a Kohen who had an injury, so he was not able to do the services. So the work he did was he was checking the wood, whether they had um, worms or not. So he was there checking the worm, uh, the woods for worms in the deer eights. So one floor tile different than the others. He came to tell a friend, Come look at this uh, floorboard that's different than the others. He could not complete the manor until his uh, um, soul left him. And that's how they knew that that where it is hidden. And uh, the Brisa uh, teaches in the name of Rishaya, that uh, Rishaya teaches the Brisa that actually what what happened was that he did, wasn't telling anybody. He tried testing the floorboard to try and with a with a hammer see if he can bring it up or something. Spark came out and burnt it. Tani, Rabbi Yudam Lakish, Rabbi Yudam Lakish uh, uh, holds that actually 
In the desert, Bnei Yisrael had two arks, one that was in the Mishkan and one that went out with them to, to battle. One that had the Torah in it, and one that had the broken parts of the, uh, of the first tablets in it. The one that had the Torah in it was in the uh, Mishkan, in the uh, t- uh, uh, tent of appointment. As it says in the verse, that the ark and of uh, the covenant of Hashem and Moshe never left the camp. And the one that had the broken uh, pieces of the of the uh, um, uh, of the tablets in them, and would go out to battle with them. And at times, it was actually seen with Bnei Yisrael. Bnei Yisrael was seen carrying the ark, but it was the ark that had the broken tablets in it, the one that had the the intact tablets, and the, the, the um, uh, Torah that was in the El Mayed, in the tent of appointment, the Mishkan. The Rabbanan Amri, the Rabbanan disagree. And they say, There was only one Aron. And it only left to go into battle one time. In the days of Eli, they, t- they took uh, the Ark out to fight the, 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 the Kenanim, uh, the Pelishtim, and it was captured in that battle. Um, and it seems that the verse... Uh, supports this idea that it was the one and only time they was taken out because the Egyptian, the, the uh, 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 Pelishtim, they said, lanu me'ele. Oh, woe to us, who is going to uh, uh, redeem us, who will save us from this holy God, that's, uh, the, this mighty God that is coming out towards us. Uh, uh, so it must be that it's something that, that has never been seen, that they brought the Ark out, because if every battle had the Ark come out uh, with them, so that they would not be so shocked and say, oh my goodness, how are we going to face this God that's coming out to, uh, towards us? However, there's also a verse that supports of Yudah, Karayim Yisai, the Rabbi Yudah ben Lakish, because uh, um, the the at the battle of Shoal, what Shoal had with the Pelishtim, uh, after, after a league came Shmuel, and then came the first king Shaul, and uh, uh, the the uh, and and uh, Shoal said, uh, Tachia, bring the Ark of Hashem um, to to oh, wow. sorry. <laughs> And um, Shaul said to, to bring forth the Ark of Hashem. Now, what would we be in, in doing with Shaul? It was after they got it back from the uh, uh, from the uh, Pelishtim, it was in Kiryas Yarim. And that's where they, they uh, placed it until David Amalek took it from there. So we see that the Ark wasn't with Shoal. So how could Shoal say to, to um, uh, bring the Ark and to, uh, so that he can uh, get advice? Uh, must be that the Ark that went out to battle and that was afterwards in Kiryas Yarim, that was the battle Ark, not the one, and, and the one that had the broken uh, luchos in there. Uh, the broken tablets, but the one that had the Sefer Torah and the, and the intact Luchas, the second Luchas, um, that's not the one that was captured and by the uh, Pelishtim and then later put in in um, Kiryas Yarim. That one was still with the uh, Bnei Yisrael, and that's the one that it, that uh, Shoal said to bring to him. So you see that there were two of them. Ma'av the Rabban. So how did the Rabbanon respond? That he he didn't ask for advice. He didn't say bring the ark. Rather, what he meant was bring the tzitz, the kohen gadol's um, uh, uh, forehead uh, gold plate that had his uh, that had the name of Hashem on it. Messiah Rabbi Yudah ben Lakish, another proof to Rabbi Yudah ben Lakish. 
when, when uh, after the story of David and Bathsheba, David sent Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, back home. And uh, he said to him, why don't you go home? And he said, I can't go home. I have to go out to the battle. And even while I'm here, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, go home because Ha'aron v'Yisrael v'Yehuda, the ark, Yisrael, and the tribe of Yehuda, Yeshvim v'Sukas, are all in Sukkot. Um, and, and my and my master Yov, the general, and all the servants of my master are out in the field. And how can I come home to eat and drink and sleep with my wife? Uh, I, I swear by my life, by your life, King David, I'm not going home. Uh, I'm not going to do this. So uh, he said, they're all the Aron, the Ark, is out in Sukkot, right? And now we're at Tezayim and Aleph, 16a at the top of Aloya Aram it, why would it be out in Sukkot? It's it's in Zion. David Amelech had brought it back. It's 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 in um, Yerushalayim. Ma'av, uh, uh, right? So it must be that the ark. There was another ark that went out to battle, and that's what he means. It's out with Yoav, the the general, out in the field, and they're all in tents. How can I go home when all of my uh, my my comrades in battle are and and the general and the, and the uh, Aron? Uh, they're all out in, in tents, and I'm going to go home. I can't do that. How did the Rabbanon respond to that? So he says, no, he is not referring to the Aron out in the battlefield. He's talking about the Beis HaBikdash not being built yet, that the Ark was still in a in Yerushalayim, in, in uh, um, Zion, the Ark was in a... Uh, um, temporary dwelling, right? The base of Mikdash had not been built yet. And even though that that doesn't mean that he was never going to have a relationship with his wife, never go home, because the Aaron code, because the, the base of Mikdash wasn't about to be built. But during battle, because of the uh, Aaron not being, uh, being in a temporary place, and a battle was going on, so he wouldn't go home to uh, be with his wife. Mishinignaz Aaron. Once the Aron was, uh, was uh, hidden away, um, together with it, other parts of the tradition were also hidden away. The Torah tells us that, uh, that Moshe was uh, that put away, Hashem told Moshe to put away a jug of man so that every generation could look at it and remember the miracle of, of having sustenance from Hashem in the desert. That jug of the man was hidden away as well. And a jug of the anointment oils that Moshe had made, and we'll talk about that a little more soon. The staff of Aaron, which had sprouted forth with um, almonds and, and flowers. So it and its prochav and its flowers stayed fresh, shkedov and its almonds. Uh, that was also hidden away. And also, the, the, when the Pelishtim, the Philistines, brought back, the, uh, sent back the, the, the uh, ark um, that they had captured, they sent it back with gifts to Hashem. Uh, so that, the, uh, the, uh, that chest full of gifts to Hashem was also hidden. Me, Gunza, and this is different than what we learned earlier, that actually that was, ta- that was stolen from the house of Hashem as well. But in any case, um, uh, uh, in, in this in this uh, uh, tradition, this interpretation, it was uh, hidden away as well. Me Gunzain, who is the one that hid it all away? Yoshio, who was the king Yoshio, he hid it. Kiva Shirah Shakasa, because he saw that a Pasik says, When he saw that the Torah says that Hashem will take your king, that will be become upon you. And uh, uh, to you and, and, and the king, to the, uh, a nation that doesn't know you and doesn't know your fathers. In other words, a foreign nation that is antagonistic to you. So, and, and he saw that the time was coming up for this to happen. So Ahmad becomes guns it. So he went ahead and he hid him. This is what it says. So he said to the Levim who, under, who, who understand, in other words, to the ones that had. Uh, uh, this premonition, this understanding, and all Yisrael that were holy to Hashem, to place the ark within the house that 
uh, uh, Shlomo, the king of David, the son of David, the king of Israel, built. And don't carry it on your shoulders. Because he said, if you if you take it with you to Bavel, you'll never you'll never be able to bring it back to its place either because you're going to create idolatry there or it'll remain captive. So this way, hide it over here. Ela ata, rather now, if this Hashem Lekech Vesama Yisrael, do this on behalf of Hashem and uh, uh, the nation Yisrael. So, so uh, Yoshio Amelach, King Yoshio, was the one that hid it um, when when he saw that the end of the Beis Hamikdash was coming. So now that we mentioned that one of the things that were hidden away was the jug of uh, 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 incense oil that was used for an, an anointment. Pitum Shemana Mishra, the making of the spices of the Shemana Mishra, it says, you shall take for you, um, and it gives a list of the spices. The Kida Chameshmeas. So the Pasuk says a list of how much of each was was uh, taken. So you had Mur Daror uh this Mur, there was 500 measures. And kinman baisim chamishmeres, so chamishmeres baisim, and cinnamon and spice had half of that, which is two fifty. Over kinei baisim chamishmeres baisim, and also uh, the the spice kinei baisim had uh, two fifty. The kida chamishmeres, and kida also had five hundred. So that's fifteen hundred total. Five hundred, two fifty, two fifty, and five hundred. Elef chamesh meismon. So that's a thousand five hundred total measure. Shem and Zayis hin, and they had a a, a, a hin of uh, olive oil, which is twelve uh, twelve lug. Shnei masalug. Shabay shol kena seikrin. What they would do is they would soak the roots. Um, different uh, uh, Rabbi Meir. The Rabbi Meir said that they soak the roots in those oil. In other words, the spices. However, Rabbi Yehuda, Aimer, <coughs> Rabbi Yehuda says, Shokin Ebemai. First, they would soak it in water so that it became satiated, it became absorbed in water so the spice is not so dry. When I say al and then you put the spy, the oil on top of these spices. And now the, the oil absorbed all that spice, all that uh, aroma. And then he would remove it the way the spice makers would do it. Hadod siv, this is what it says. Shemen mishkas kodesh, the uh, oil of anointment that was uh, holy, um, uh, made the way rekeach, master rekeach, the way that uh, spice makers do it. Don't ever hear about Rabbi Eli. Shemen mishkas shasa mishkas midbar, the anointment oil that Moshe made in the desert. My sinisim nasabai. Was completely miraculous. from the beginning to the end. At first, it was only twelve lug, which is not a lot. Um, we're talking about uh, um, maybe a, a, a hundred fifty ounces. Shenema um, hint because it says a hint, which is twelve lug. It would not be enough to even really get the, the aroma out of this much spice. Uh, how much more so that you have to heat it so so uh, some of that would 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 uh, burn off by the fire. And also the wood itself would absorb some. And the pot absorbs some. And yet, from these 12, uh, um, 12 lug, which which is not all that much, um, and they would anoint the entire mishka, the kol kelov, and all the vessels, at the table and all its vessels, um, the menorah and all of her vessels, and also Aaron and his children, every one of them, Every single day of the seven days of the inauguration, and the future kohen gadols were also 
the, the high priests were also nimshach, were also anointed with these um, and also kings. Now, for kings, it wasn't every king, because Melach Betchila, the first king in that dynasty, in that lineage, Ton uh, Meshicha, requires uh, uh, anointment oil. Melech be Melech, but it, the son of the king who uh, inherited the throne from his father, Ainton Meshicha, did not require to have the anointment oil as a part of the anointment. My time, Kumashrei Kazehu. It says, the Pasuk, uh, go ahead and uh, get up and, and anoint him, Ki Zehu, because, it, it, because he's the one. Zetoy and Meshicha, and only he requires anointment. The entire story, Mashiach, about the future generations do not require anointment. Vekulon, vekuloi kaim laasid loving, it all be reestablished in the future time. Hador dechsev sheme mishchas kodesh yezeli l'derasechem. This anointment oil is go is holy to me for your generations. Emosh dina melachin el gabimai. We only anoint kings at a river. Uh, sorry, at a wellspring. Just as that spreads, so to um, the 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 uh, um, and, and is alive. It's 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 fresh water that's fully being uh, regenerated. So to um, a, a blessing to the kingdom that it also to the reign of this king that also um, last and 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 go on. Shneimar if Captain Shlomo ben Ala Preda, you take my son Shlomo on the uh, um, uh, Preda, the the mule or the stallion, the mule. Ashali, which is to me, and bring him down to Gichon, and you and, and he will anoint him there. Tzadik Akayim and Nasan and Navi, the Melech Yisrael, both Tzadik, the high priest, and Nasan the Navi, the prophet, will anoint him as king of Israel. Uh, now the Gemara asks, okay, so we see that they took him down to the Gichon, which is a wellspring, but why did they have to anoint him? We just said that the king, the son of a king, doesn't need anointment. Over there, the reason is was because Adonio had been pronounced king by some of his followers the day before. And so uh, um, uh, the, the Shlomo needed to be anointed by David Amelech's um, statement. Why did Shlomo get anointed? Because of the... the uh, um, Struggle, if you would, from Adonio. Yoash, why was Yoash anointed? On account of Atalio. Because of Yoyakim, his brother, who was two years older. Yoyakim was two years older. And uh, and therefore, they they anointed Yoyachas as a show. Yehu, on account of Yoyachim. Looking, Siv, Kumashrek, Zehu. Um, well, we have a problem. Uh, uh, why did you mention um, uh, uh, Yehu? Uh, um, it's only the household of of um, uh, the, only the household of, of David that needs uh, needs anointment, not the household of the the kings of the northern kingdom of the breakaway kingdom. Uh, it's fine. So the reason is on account of uh, it only means to mention uh, and Yochim. So the Gemara says now going back to the Aron, the Ark being hidden away. Um, the the uh, the problem is how can you say Yochim? Uh, anoint, was anointed. After all, Yoshio had already prior to that hidden the ark, and, and together with the ark, we said he hid the anointment oil. So you're right. He was anointed with a fire summon. He was anointed with uh, uh, with um, uh, 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 just uh, balsam oil, a separate oil, not the spice oil that Moshe had made. Kings were anointed from a horn. Shoal the Yehu, Shoal and Yehu Nimshikum in a pach. They they had a jug that was used. Now jugs are are um, are breakable. They're earthenware. They're this they, they would disintegrate. So Aisamachus Amachus Averis. Their kingdom also disintegrated. 
David is shloimin imshcham in a karen from bone, from a from a horn. Isa machusan machus kayemas. So their kingdom lasted. Emesh regarding malachim. Another law: kahanim cannot be anointed as kings. Amar Rabbi Yona and and Tundaria from this place. Al shem leyasa shem yehuda. Based on the verse that the staff, the, the scepter, shall not leave the tribe of Yehuda. Amar of Chivarada, the verse says, um, it, in order that his kingdom or, or that he his reign be lengthened long in days, he and his children in the midst of Israel. At the end of that verse, it's it. It says then afterwards, la you the kahanim of him, and it will not be for the kahanim of him. So we see the kahanim should not be anointed as kings, and that was a problem with the chashmonaim, with Asmoneans, with the with the with the Maccabee kings. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, who Yochanan, who Yochas. His name is Yochanan, and he's known as Yochas. Now the the uh, the pasuk when it when it mentions the children of Yoshio. It says, "Habachor Yochanan, the eldest is Yochanan. Hasheni Yehoyakum, the second is Yehoyakum. Hashlishi Tzidkiyo, Arvi Shalom, and and the fourth is Shalom." So he says that Yochanan is actually uh, Yehoyachas. So wait, uh, it, but uh, it, that means that Yehoyachas was the eldest. And the Gemara beforehand said that Yehoyakim was two years older. So the Gemara says, you're right. Yehoyakim is two years older. And the Pasuk, when it says, Yochanan HaBachor, what it means is he was the, the first to be anointed king. He was the heir to the throne, even though that he was second. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Hu Shalom And the last one, it says, uh, it says Shlishi, the third is Tzidkiyahu, the fourth is Shalom. And n- now he says, well, actually, Shalom and Tzidkiyahu is the same person, the same person. So what are you talking about? Vaksiv, Hashlishi Tzidkiyahu, Baravi is Shalom. But we just said that the third one is Tzidkiyahu, the fourth is Shalom. That's different. So, yeah, you're right. He was the third to be born and the fourth to be king. Shlishi, Latoldus, and Dalad, Lamalchus, because he became king after his nephew. Why was he called Sidkiyo? Because he accepted upon himself the judgment of Hashem. Shalom. And why was his name Shalom? Because the, 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 um, the completion or the end of the household of David during the, the reign of the first base of Mikdash uh, was ended at that uh, in him. He was the last. However, his name was not Shalom, and his name was not Tzidkiyo. Ela Matanya, his name was the gift of Hashem. As it says that the king of Babel in, um, placed Matanya, his his uncle, to be a king in his place. And he called him Tzidkiyo, who be righteous in the name of God. Now we're going to go through the measurements of the ark and what was inside the ark. So, Rabbi, there are uh, amos, meaning the measure, an ama, which we call in English a cubit, but nobody knows what a cubit is either. So we'll just stick with ama. So an ama is can be made up of five tefachim, um, which is four uh, with five uh, fist. Uh, uh, Breads or six tefachim. It can be made up of six tighter placed uh, bre- uh, um, uh, tefachim. So the the uh, ama, you always have to know whether the ama is a six tefach ama or a five tefach ama. So Rabbi, Me- Rabbi Yochanan says that that Rabbi Meir is of the opinion that um, all of that the ark was made in a, where the Torah says it was two and a half ama by one and a half ama, that was in the measure of six tefachim amas. So the one and a half would be nine and tefach, and the two and a half 
uh, would be uh, 18, uh, sorry, would be um, uh, uh, 15 ama, 15 tefach ama, uh, uh, two and a half amas. So, Amar Rabbi Yechanan, ma'ama shal shisha tefach amayarun nasun. The ark was made in a six tefach uh, ama. Man tana ba'ama shal shisha tefach him, Rabbi Meir, and this is the opinion of Rabbi Meir, that's not like we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Meir, Oimer, kola ama sa'i ba'beinanis. All measures, all amos, all measuring sticks or, or, or measures in the base of Mikdash were by, with, by, with the with the mid-size ama, meaning a a, 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 a six tefach ama. Rabbi Yehuda Eimer, amos habinyan shisha, uh, shisha. Rabbi Yehuda says no, that was only for the measure of the construction of the structure itself. Shel kalim, but the measure of the vessels, she, uh, um, chamisha, that were a five uh, five tefach ama. So now the Gemara says, "Al daitid Rabbi Meir, based on Rabbi Meir, do Amar ba'amashal shisha tefachim, who says that it's a alma of six tefachim, ha'aren asu arkei shel aren tesvav tefachim, which means that the length of the ark, which was two and a half alma, was uh, 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 was uh, um, fifteen uh, tefach. There's siv amasayim chetzi arkei because it was two and a half alma." So two and a half, six and six, twelve. Half of that is three, fifteen. Amsa ashisha, the amsa ashisha, palgas amsa plosa. So in amma six and six and three. So you have a half of three. So that's fifteen. The arba luchas haya by, and you had the the tablets in there, the the two whole and the two broken. Shnayim shleimer, shnayim shavurim. The chesiv says asher shibarata v'sam tabarat. The ones that you broke, you place in the ark. Now, halucha is the height or laying down the length of each one of the tablets was six tefachim. Rachavay, it's uh, with shlosh tefachim with three tefachim. So we had them uh, two tablets, three tefachim wide, six tefachim tall, or side by side they were six by uh, 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 six by six. The ten arkin shalucha is larker shalom. So if you place the length to the length of the ark, uh, so now it took up three tefachim of the nine tefachim width and six tefachim of the uh, um, uh, six tefachim of the um, fifteen tefachim length. So you had six and six is twelve with three, but so you had them as opposed to being side by side, you had them one on top of the other. And so what was left was, was left that in the length of the ark, you had three tefachim left at the other end. So what was what was placed there? And now we're on Tezayin Ahmed Base 16b at the top. Now you need a, a half a tefach just for the thicknesses of the wall of the ark itself. Because the the two and a half by one and a half ammo was on the outer measure, so the inner measure was uh, you lost that half a tefach on each side. So what was left nishtayer shteitzvachim. So you lost an entire tefach in the thickness of the wall. You left with two tefachim alone. Let's say for Torah. That's where they placed a sefer Torah in the ark above the uh, or uh, the the uh, 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 the tablets above the uh, luchas. So again. You have um, instead of the lucha side by side, you had them in f- one in front of the other, to the length of the ark, uh, six tefachim each uh, tablet, uh, each stone. So you had two of them that took up uh, the nine tefach, the tenth tefach, uh, sorry, um, that, to- that took up the uh, twelve tefachim, the uh, the thirteenth tefach was for the thickness of the wall, and the um, the last tefach, last two tefachim, they they placed the sefer Torah. Rechav shalaron tisha tefach. Now the width was nine tefach. They say amma v'chetzi arka. So amsa ashita. So one is uh, six. One amma is six tefachim. Upal gas amsa tlosa. That's um, another uh, um, and, and that's another half, which is three, which is nine. Now v'abal lo chesayi by shnayim shleim shnayim shvur. And as we said, the four tablets were in there, two complete and two the broken ones. Uh, 
Aluchos, the tablets, and then it's a total of six Tvachim wide. Ten Rachman Shaluchos, the Rachman Shalara. And now, if you have the tablets, the first ones, three Tvachim wide with the other in in front of it. Um, the uh, the second, the broken tablets, taking up three tefachim as well. So you're left with two, with a set of three tefachim. Now, and you lose out one tefach on the walls of either side. And there is another two uh, uh, tefach. Now, what would what would you need there? That's to complete the space of the um, uh, uh, Sefer Torah. What what that means is that in order to be able to take the Sefer Torah out and put it back in, you needed some space around the tablets, and so that's where you'd put your hand in and lift the, and lift the the Sefer Torah out from the two tefachim space at the head. Of the of the tablets of the uh, of the um, uh, uh, complete intact uh, um, tablets. Rav Shimon and Lakish Shomer ba'am of Aschamish Tefachim. However, Reish Lakish he says no. It was actually a a, a five tefach uh, ama. I are nosim. So man tana ba'am of Aschamish Tefachim. Rav Yehuda, and this is based on the opinion of Rav Yehuda. Uh, the Tanin Tamam, which we learned over there, Rabbi Yudah Aimer, Amas Abinian Shisha, Tvachim, that the measure for the construction of the building, of the structure, that was a six Tefach, Shel Kalim, Chamisha, and the measure for vessels, which is the ark and the and the table uh, uh, and the menorah, that was a a measure of five Tvachim. Main Aaron Kaliu. And indeed, the ark is a vessel because it was not attached to the ground, so it's not a part of the structure. Um, and so tomorrow, as the show will go through what was the uh, how uh, the the measure and the and the structure of what was in the uh, in the um, uh, Aaron, based on the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, that the measure for the structure of vessels is actually a five tefach uh, a five tefach ama. Which left uh, um, one ama less space within uh, w- within the vessel on each direction. Shukach, wishing you a great day, Kalto. See you tomorrow.